On day one, I spawned into the PAL world overworld as a PAL hunter, ready to capture and put to work every PAL I could find. I want to be the very best, like no prior world famous game franchise ever was. With six hearts, that was going to be really difficult, but every challenge along the way, with courage, I would face. Hey, you better knock that off right now. A whiny voice called out to me, and I turned to see a strange character shaking his fist in my direction. What are you? Some kind of leather worker? I don't need anyone to work on leather. I'm on a quest for pals. I'm not a leather worker. I'm trash Sue'em. And I'm here to sue you for stealing my idea for a collectible monster franchise. Uh, but I just got here. It's Pal World, not whatever world you come from. You really think you're legally distinct enough to stand against me? Dude, chill. I'm just trying to have fun in this fun new original game. Why are you trying to get on my case? Enough! I'm taking you to court, and I'm confiscating all your pals, too. But I haven't even gotten any yet. Trash Suum came at me with all the fury of a billionaire CEO looking to wring more money out of the world. I was too freaked out to fight and decided to hightail it for the hills. Fortunately, I knew that Pal World was a survival game, so I relied on my survival skills to disappear into the wild. I managed to lose Trash Suum and could start enjoying the game. I'm so good at surviving, you guys. I looked around in search of pals and came across some kind of warped phantom in the depths of the cave. Hey there, pal. I'm here to either destroy you with my fists or make you my friend, or both. Apparently, the warped phantom didn't like me very much and tried to attack me. I soon realized that life in the pal world was not going to be so easy, and I fled for my life for the second time in the same day. Man, this is so much fun. I love trying to survive when it's difficult to survive. Maybe I'll even survive 100 days. Wouldn't that be something? On day two, I decided to start surviving and crafting in the survival crafting gameplay of Pal World. Wow, wee! A game with both survival and crafting. That's so original. I punched trees in order to gather wood, and some of the trees dropped apples for me to eat. Yum, yum! Delicious survival! Once I had a sufficient amount of wood, I was able to craft a wooden pickaxe. I tunneled into the ground to gather stone and immediately upgraded my wood wooden pickaxe to a stone pickaxe. So this is the true Pal World experience, unlike any game I've ever played. I went ahead and crafted a stone sword with the remaining stone I had. Sweet, a weapon. Now I can beat, I mean meet, new pals head on. Of course, I would need a place for all of my pals to stay. So I started building a Pal World base in the typical Pal World fashion. It's like one of my normal bases, but it's Pal World somehow. Yay, Pal World. In the process of building, another warped phantom showed up in the area. Seizing on the opportunity I was denied earlier, I drew my sword and ran towards the mob in order to make it my pal. Or else. Let's try this again. Hey there, pal. Oh, I'm not your pal, buddy. I'm just a warped phantom of bygone times, looking to inhabit this world for the sake of nostalgia. Yeah, that's weird. Just be my pal, won't you? No way! Get warped! The warped phantom attacked, and I had no choice but to strike back with my mighty stone sword, shaving down its health until the creature was no more. Okay, so my attempts to obtain pals so far have been pretty unsuccessful, but I have faith that many pal-filled days are on the horizon. I continued to furnish my room until the end of the day. On day three, it was another challenging day in Pal World. I had gone exploring in the Savannah Plateau so that I could gather more resources to build my base even bigger than it already was. I sure do love it when I make things out of other things. Why aren't other video games like this? While I traveled across the land, searching far and wide, I ran into an Eevee from Pokemon, or um, a pal of some variety that I had never seen before. What a delightful and magical experience that could never be recaptured. I had better enjoy this moment. Heck yeah, you should. Gaze and wonder upon me, Zozo. I am the great an adorable Kremis. Oh, Kremis. So that's your name. Do you want to be my pal? <laughs> you must be joking. Kremis doesn't belong to anyone but Kremis. Best run away before I pummel you to the shadowy realm with my cute, fluffy fists of fury. Jeez, this is a surprisingly violent vibe for the whole Pal World thing. Do you know what? I guess you can enjoy being independent. 
for now. Yeah, that's right, little nerd. Saunter off and come back to Kremis when you have enough badges to train me. Or whatever badges are in Pow World. Deflated and dejected, I wandered the Savannah Plateau without a pal in the world. Oh man, I'm totally failing at Pal World. I'll never gain a pal of my own. Just then, a Vulpix from Pokemon, er, uh, I mean a fox-like pal I had never seen before, appeared before me. I'll be your pal. Aren't I pal enough? Hmm, I don't know. What's your name, little Firefox? Foxbox is my name. What do you say, tough guy? Can I be a pal? Well, why the heck not? You're my pal, Foxbarks. I'll let you come back to the base with me. Hooray! My existence has meaning. From day four to day five, a new den for Foxbarks was added to my base, and it was built from the ground up by Foxbarks herself. Hey, Zozo, not to be rude, but... I've seen your videos, and this is usually the part where you add on to the base. Normally, I would. That just isn't the pal world way. Now work harder, pal. Okay, Zozo. Anything to be your pal. Fox Sparks was a bit of a slow worker, but managed to get the job done, and with enough time for me to ready myself for the inevitable warped phantom ambush that would come my way. What the heck? Didn't I defeat you already? You cannot defeat Nostalgia Zozo. It always returns in a new form. I'm bound to inhabit this Pokemon-like world and see what all the fuss is about, just like you are bound to craft and survive. We are simply beings with different goals and reason for living. We may be able to communicate, but are we really the same at all? Ooh, man, you warped phantoms are so annoying. Come on, you rambling creep. I battled the warped phantom with my stone sword, and similar to the previous battle I had against another member of its kind, there was very little challenge in putting it down. Honestly, it was a little anticlimactic, but I found the encounter a lot more satisfying when the warped phantom's drop was a power bow. Whoa, a powerful range weapon that I could use to hunt both pal and enemy. With the power bow in hand, I just knew that my time in the pal world was going to become even more fun and original. From day six to day eight, I began capturing a bunch more Vulpix, or uh, Fox Marks. I would need a much larger workforce if I was to build a truly magnificent pal world base. I sure do need to obtain more pals. You might say I need to catch them all. Hold it, hold it, stop everything. Uh-oh, it was that nasty hater, Trash Suum. I wasn't expecting to see him again so soon, but here he was, shaking his fist at me like before. You again, I told you. I'm just trying to have fun in Pal World. Why are you harshing my mellow? Oh yeah? Well, your so-called fun might be stolen from my original idea. You know, Pokemon? The biggest collectible monster game in the whole wide world. Didn't Satoshi Tajiri create Pokemon and not some leathery, leatherworking looking dude? Be quiet! I'm sick and tired of people saying Pal World is so cool and original! Tell me this, Zozo. Does your precious Pal World have these? Trash whipped out an exploding crossbow and pointed it at me. Oh, cool, a ranged weapon. I heard Pal World is full of those. Did you get it here? Ah, uh, uh, no. Well, okay, maybe. But it's still 100% mine, and I'm gonna blow you up with it, Mr. Hunter Gatherer Survival Crafter Man. Take this. He started firing crossbow bolts at me, each of which totally exploded on contact with whatever they hit. I had to take cover while I ran away in serpentine formation. There was nothing I could do to counterattack Trash Suum's ranged firepower without a ranged weapon of my own. Well, I did have my power bow, but I had inconveniently left it back at my base. Oh man, no fair. These ranged weapons could change the history of battle as we know it and reshape all conflicts for the foreseeable future. I managed to narrowly escape, but vowed to get a cool ranged weapon of my own in order to defend myself. It's my right as a citizen of Power World. From day nine to day 10, I was reflecting on my disappointing lack of ranged firepower to Fox Sparks, who was being a real pal and listening intently to every word. And then he shot exploding crossbow bolts at me. And I was like, no, so bad. But not because I was scared of the bolts, but because shooting one of those things looked so cool and I wanted to do it. Hmm, as your bestest pal in the whole wide world, it sounds to me like you really need to get your hands on an awesome ranged weapon and nothing else will make you happy until you do. That's exactly it. Ugh, you totally get me, Fox Sparks. I don't even know where to find one. I guess I'll settle for my power bow, even though I don't even know if it's really that powerful. Would it make you feel better if myself and all the other Fox Sparks you captured did a bunch of unpaid labor on your base? 
And how? So the Fox Barks began to work hard at making the base super duper by working on a storage room, a nice and cozy furnace room, and a training room in order to make up for the lack of a cool shooty weapon in my hand. My little legion of pals began work on a premium statue of one of the most famous and iconic pals in all of Pal World. Who's that Pokemon? Uh, I mean Pal. The backbreaking labor continued until the base was up to my standards and my sense of emotional fulfillment was satisfied. My Pal World base now had a storage room, probably for keeping my ranged weapons, if I had any. There was a training room where my pals could engage in pal battles, climb ropes, and grow stronger with more experience. The last upgrade was a heating furnace, powered by the very flames of the many fox sparks that maintained my base. That's what pals are for. From day 11 to day 12, I continued to have harmless fun in pal world, while Trash Suum seethed with barely concealed loathing. Oh, I'm so angry. So very, very angry. I can't believe Zo. Ozo and so many others all over Pal World are having fun with pals. Why can't they understand that it's all just a big ripoff of Pokemon? Which was all my idea. I'm gonna sue them into next week, and then the week after that. Heck, I'll even sue them into next month, and next year, and all eternity. Nobody should ever get to have an idea remotely similar to mine, ever. Because my name is Trash Suum, and that's exactly what I'll do. Trash shook his fist to the sky until the sun went down and continued shaking it until the sun came up. He was pretty tired at that point, but he was no less angry about it all. You know what? Maybe I need to try a different angle with all this. I am angry, but if I come in all hot and bothered, it's really gonna put people off of my message. I'm gonna gather my thoughts and make sure I actually have a case here. Once I do, I'll approach Zozo and have a frank conversation about whether or not Power World is actually a ripoff. If it is, then I'll destroy him! No, 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 no. That's still too much anger. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to the Savannah Plateau in order to rise to the challenge of facing down Eevee, uh, Kremis. Come out, come out, Kremis. I'm way more ready to take you on now. Kremis emerged from the rocks with a look of adorable determination on his face. Is that a fact? Really think that you have what it takes to match my terrible and ultra cute might? You must be dreaming, and I'm about to wake you up. He charged me, but I backed up and drew my power bow, which didn't shoot exploding bolts or anything, but was able to do some ranged damage. After a few shots, I realized that the power bow wasn't that much worse than a crossbow, and I started having fun again. And when I'm having fun, I've already won. Kremis took several more hits from my power bow. I dodged for my life until I could draw my stone sword and close into melee range. With a few more slashes, Kremis had been defeated and I won the fight. Ha! What do you think of that, Kremis? How do you like me now? That's when I realized I was talking to a pile of XP. Huh, maybe I should have captured him and made him my pal. Yeah, oh well, XP is still super good. Yummy yummy in my level up tummy. I drank, or ate, or uh, absorbed the XP and became an advanced Pal World survivor with 20 hearts and a sonic shriek that could stun pals from far away. More ranged options. Now that's what I'm talking about, pal. From day 16 to day 19, I had my pals dig a mine shaft beneath the base, allowing me to access the subterranean riches of Pal World. Mining too? Pal World has it all. Before too long, I got my hands on a mess of iron ore, which I would soon be able to process into some upgraded tools for my Pal World experience. But in order to do that, I'd have to return above ground, which was far more difficult than I expected. I was confronted by a small horde of forsaken pals left down below the surface of the ground because nobody wanted to associate with them. Get back, you unpopular creature designs. That'll teach you to want to be pals with me. After I had ruined the self-esteem and corporeal forms of the forsaken, I went back to my base and smoked the iron ore into iron ingots. Then I made myself an iron sword and iron pickaxe just like in Minecraft. I mean Power World. Wait, no, I do mean Minecraft this time. From day 20 to day 22, I was chilling in my totally rad Power World pad when I was approached by my original Vulpix. Oops, uh, uh, Fox Sparks, the only pal I ever willingly have full conversations with. Another lovely, unbearably fun day in Power World, huh, Fox Sparks? It's about to not be so fun anymore, Zozo. Guess who's knocking 
looking at the door to the base. Is it Kremis? What? No, no, it's not Kremis. It's Trash Suam. And he's here to discuss the legal case with you. Legal case? What legal case? Oh, nothing. Just the legal case over whether Pal World is original or a ripoff of some other monster franchise where the fate of the entire Pal World hangs in the balance. That legal case. Ah, all right then. Let me go talk to him. I stepped outside to find Trash Suam, holding a stack of papers. It seemed he was serious about talking about the law. Hi, Trash. Look, I don't really know if I'm the right guy to talk about this with, but I'm glad you're taking your anger to a constructive place. Oh, Zozo, you wish this was just about Pal World. You wish that was the case, but it's not. I caught you red-handed in one big boo-boo. You've blundered. You've stumbled. You are Humpty Dumpty, and you're about to take a big fall. What in the Pal World are you talking about, Trash? I'm talking about you, Zozo. You might say that Pal World is all fun and harmless, and therefore it shouldn't be in violation of any existing copyright. But isn't that just wishful thinking on your part? Because you, Zozo, you're not here in Pal World because you have permission. You're just here because you decided you could be here. Just like all the other worlds and characters you become without ever consulting the law. Oh yes, Zozo. I've looked into you, and I have quite the case. Whoa, okay, okay, slow down there, Trash. You've been meta this whole time, but you've gone way too far, way too quickly. There's no need to bring my other videos into this. It's Pow World. Come on, let's all have fun in Pow World. Yay. You think you're so clever, don't you, Zozo? But I'm on to your little ruse. And next time, I won't be so nice with the paperwork. A hurricane is headed your way, Zozo. A hurricane of suits. Or my name is in Trash Suum. He stormed away with the fury of a truly agitated lawyer. I knew then that this was going to be the battle of the next hundred days of my life. And not just any battle, a legal battle. From day 23 to day 26, I put all my energy into how I'd go about facing Trash Suum in the Pal World Court of Law, if there even is one. Without a law degree or access to a public defender, I knew I'd need something to help with the case. Fortunately for me, Pal World always provides, and I was able to find a Spelunker chest plate in one of Vulpix's chests. Whatever nasty jabs Trash decided to throw my way, they'd be no match for me, as the chest plate stands between his cruel words and my heart. No hard feelings felt here. With my new upgrade and confident glee, Pal World provided me yet again with another powerful surprise, a pet bat. Wow, I didn't know this chest plate came with a friend. Are you, by chance, a registered judge of Pal World? I could really use some legal advice. The bat didn't answer. I guess in order for legal consultation, I would need to pay him a ton of money. Money which I don't have, so I guess he'll just be my silent friend for now. But you don't need to be silent friends. Leave a comment below on which pal is your favorite. And if you want to see more powerful adventures like these, be sure to search ZOZO on YouTube for more videos. From day 27 to day 31, my now very controversial labor force of fox marks had completed the next part of the mysterious statue. I still couldn't tell which pal it was supposed to be a statue of, but I was sure they'd get there eventually. Just to be absolutely Absolutely sure. I checked in with Foreman Foxparks, who is leading the team of builders. So, how goes the progress on that fantastical statue, Foxparks? The pals have been working night and day and are incredibly tired. Few even wandered off and got lost because of the stresses of construction. And what's the bad news? The bad news is that we need some pink terracotta or we'll never be able to complete the statue. Ever! Never ever, huh? Well, I better do something about that. It wouldn't be very Pal World if my pals had to stop working on something. I'll be right back with some pink terracotta. And with that, I set off on a grand quest to the warped desert in order to obtain the fabled pink terracotta. From day 32 to day 35, I searched the warped desert high and low for pink terracotta the curiosity of what the statue might be, killing me more than any idea of facing trash without a lawyer present. If only I had the opportunity to attend 100 days of law school. Fortunately for me, being so pal worthy and awesome drew rogue pals directly to me, like some sort of pal net, like a pal magnet. I should really write a pal world diction palnry full of pal world pal worlds. You should also start writing your pal obituary. Shouted a strong strangely familiar voice. It was Kremis. But how? Kremis? I thought I XP'd you. Did the idea of my diction palry excite you so much that you rose from the grave just to read it? No, you fluffless fool.
fool. I'm Kremis II, Kremis's just as evil twin brother. I'm here to avenge him, and this time, drink or eat or absorb your XP. You're no match for me, you uncute Aho menace. No one threatens the great Kremis family, and no one messes with I. No one. Ow! While Kremis II endlessly villain speeched, it gave me enough time to pull out my iron sword and take a few brutal swings. It was so enveloped in his villainous monologue that he didn't even realize I had destroyed him until it was too late. Pal-tastic! More XP. I was starting to feel hungry being out here for so long, but now it's time for some desert dessert. As I feasted on the creme de la creme, my mealtime was interrupted by a friendly face. Thank you, wordsmith warrior. That cremis was getting really annoying standing around here all day and practicing his villain speech, anticipating your arrival. No problem, but I'm sorry I didn't save you any dessert. Must be really famished out here, and pretty lonely all on your own, too. I'm Zozo. I'm Anubis, and do not worry. The Mirages at least let me temporarily believe there's a banquet with water nearby. There you are correct. I am alone. Wasn't always this way, you see. I had a best friend, my pet rattlesnake. But unfortunately, he was snatched from my hands by an evil snake napper. I see you're pretty competent with the sword. Could you help me get my pet back? To me, he's sort of like... A pal? Oh, I'm the pal wrangling expert. Leave it to me, Anubis, and I'll have your pet back in two shakes of a rattlesnake's tail. From day 36 to day 39, my grand quest for the pink terracotta had been taken over by a secondary quest to rescue Anubis's rattlesnake from the clutches of an insidious snake napper. That's the thing about side quests. There's always more side to quest. Yeah, you know what? Either pretend that that made sense or forget I said it. I traveled deeper into the warped desert until I came about another Power World base that was not nearly as cool or well built as mine. Is this guy a noob or what? I bet he doesn't have any pals. I approached the lame base out of morbid curiosity and heard the sound of a rattlesnake in distress. Yeah, I'm no snakeologist, but I'm guessing that must be the lost serpent of Anubis. Hang on, pal. Zozo is on the way to help you out. I looked in through a window and saw the rattlesnake fearfully cowering in the corner of the room. An extremely familiar looking electric rodent was staring the rattlesnake down with a twist of madness in his adorable mascot eyes. Please, you're scaring me. Won't you be a pal and let me go? What did you call me? All I said was you should be a pal. Don't you ever, ever call me that. I am not one of you. I'll never be one of you. I shouldn't even be here in this world. And unless somebody sends me back, I'm gonna keep kidnapping pals. That's when I realized who the sinister kidnapper was. It was Pikachu from Pokemon. What is he doing here? Power World is a completely different game than Pokemon. I didn't know what to make of this dangerous situation, but I knew that Pikachu didn't become a worldwide cultural icon by being easy to beat. I had to come up with a foolproof plan before I went in his base, or else I'd be thunderstruck for sure. From day 40 to day 43, my genius plan had begun to unfold. I called forth the bat from my spell Lunker armor and set it into the room to distract Pikachu and lure him away from the captive rattlesnake. Oh, stop it, you darn bat. Back in my world, we don't have bats. We have Zubats, and they're twice as annoying, but in an endearing way. Pikachu followed the bat out of the base, and I was able to infiltrate. While I was making my way to the rattlesnake, I discovered an armory chamber, and inside was a mechanical short bow. Whoa, this is one fire ranged weapon. The power bow may be powerful, this thing will fire arrow super fast with advanced technology. I gotta have it. After I weighed the ethics of stealing property from a kidnapper, I grabbed the mechanical shortbow and then proceeded to where Anubis's rattlesnake was still cowering. Hey there, pal. I'm here to bust you out. Anubis misses you. Hooray! Anubis sent you. I knew he'd send someone. Yeah, now slither away quickly while I deal with Pikachu. The rattlesnake escaped thanks to my distraction. I was planning on following him when Pikachu ran back into the base lightning sparking through his rosy red cheeks. What the heck happened here? Why did my rattlesnake turn into a guy who stole my mechanical crossbow? That's what you think happened? Think you might have gone a little crazy, Pikachu. Crazy? Is it crazy to want to be where I'm meant to belong? I'm Pikachu, the second most famous cartoon mouse in the entire world. And I want out of this funhouse mere parody of my home. 
Huh, but until now, I thought everyone was having fun in Pal World. Maybe some pals. I mean, people. I mean, Pokemon aren't. I don't want to make life any harder for you. Just stop kidnapping snakes and we won't have a problem. Fine, whatever. Get out of my base. I don't need any pals. After a very tense moment with Pikachu that would likely pay off down the line in me earning his begrudging respect, I went back to Anubis and told him the good news. Which, of course, he already knew because his rattlesnake had come home. You're a real pal, Zozo. I guess I am, but you're a real pal of a pal. Thanks, pal. Now, do you happen to know where I might find some pink terracotta? I can do one better. There you go. Five steps should be enough, right? More than enough, pal. From day 44 to day 49, I returned back to my base with pink terracotta, excited to see my statue unfold. However, in my absence, the fox sparks decided to go on break. Hey, no sleeping on the job. But Zozo, there was no job for us to do. Not without pink terracotta, and because you never let us go home to sleep, we needed to catch some Z's. Oh, you'll be catching Z's all right. Two Z's and two O's, standing for Zozo's fist. Because I caught you all slacking on the clock, it's double the work for all of you. Sending my employees back to work on my glorious and mysterious statue, I realized my base was in need of an upgrade. And because I never break a promise to my loving employees, doubling the work it shall be. You, Foxmark number three. My name is David. Fox Spark number three. Go fetch Fox Spark number seven, ten, four, and thirty-five. If I don't see a perimeter wall up by sundown, I'm cutting your pay tenfold. Tenfold? Oh no. But we don't even make one fold. Thrilled to begin working again by their own free will, and definitely not ruled by the fear of being unemployed, I instilled on them. My Fox Sparks rushed to start construction on the perimeter wall. Man, what a healthy workplace environment this is. Sitting down and watching my Fox Sparks work for days on end is super exhausting. So I headed back to my other happy hired hands to see the progress made on my statue. It wasn't quite done yet, which was mildly disappointing. If you fox sparks don't pick up the pace, I may have to start considering layoffs. Whoa, hearing that made my fox sparks work twice as hard. They must be just as eager as me to see the statue unfold. If they continue at this speed, that'll be done in no time. From day 50 to day 53, my base was under attack by another member of the family. Where do all you cremis keep coming from? Or is it cremis? says Crema Kermis? Kermisuses? Enough! Behold, my totally original and adorable creature design, even within my own family. For I am Sister Kremis, otherwise known as Kremisus, otherwise known as your nemesis. You may be able to ride Kremisus with a nemesis, but a tomato potato. Let's do this fight now. I drew my mechanical shortbow and ran out to face Sister Kremis in the most fun and epic Power World battle in the history of Power World. So Far. My new Kremis nemesis had all the powers of the previous members of her family that I had battled, also heightened knockback on all of her attacks. But I had powers too. My Warden Shriek was a good accompaniment for my rapid fire shortbow arrows, and like the other two Kremis before her, Sister Kremis was no match for Zozo. Ah, now that's what I call another fun Power World gaming experience. My overwhelming feeling of fun caused me to level up and obtain a total of 30 hearts. I also gained the smash ability. Yay! Now I can cause destruction to the world around me. I'm gonna wreck it. Whoa, that's good. Did I just come up with that? I was about to go brag to all the fox sparks about my newfound awesomeness. Then I saw Trash Suum fleeing the base while carrying my original fox sparks. Zozo, help me. He's capturing me and taking me back to his base, which ordinarily is what we pals are for. But I feel like in context, this is a lot more sinister. Quiet, Vulpix. You are property of the Pokemon Company and our important evidence in the case against both Pal World and Zozo. Or my name isn't Trash Suum. Trash took my Vulpix, I mean Fox Sparks, far away before I could hope to catch up with him. No, my pal! This is the worst day in Pal World history. I'll never forgive you for stealing my stuff, Trash Suum! From day 54 to day 57, I had to spend a lot of time reworking my base from the attack inflicted by Sister Kremis, better known as Kremesis. I wonder how far the Kremis family tree extends. Destroying my property, how long would it take to wipe them all out? Just like how they wiped out part of my precious 
base. Fox Marks number one. You'd better get started on repairing my base. I yelled for my best Fox employee. But to my surprise, he never came. He must have been slacking off again. Or worse, had attempted to use his non-existent paid time off. Oh wait, that's right, that scoundrel. Trash Suum stole him. Oh, I'll get that trash bag back for this. If my name isn't Zozo. I looked around to the rest of my Fox Sparks who had already started working on my base's repairs, but weren't going fast enough to my liking. Losing my employee of the month Fox Sparks number one was really taking a hit to my company. And so I did what any great business owner hates to do, actually work at my own company. After helping my Fox Sparks repair my perimeter wall, I needed a well-deserved break. Unlike my Fox Sparks, I was allowed to take breaks when Whenever I wanted, so I left my awesome empire to visit an old friend of mine. Hello, Zozo. How are things going at your base? My base? Oh, you must mean my enterprise. Well, things are going horribly. It seems like the kidnapping karma has come to bite me in the butt this time. My arch nemesis stole my number one employee, Fox Sparks number one. That's a shame, pal. Are your other Fox Sparks still there? Yes, thank Pal World. If it weren't for them and their low to no compensated labor, I don't know how I'd keep my business and building and base going. Perhaps you could do the work yourself. Ah, base building business bosses don't work? Oh, Nubis. No Fox Sploy was more valuable to me than Fox Spark number one. I don't play favorites in the workplace, but he was my favorite. Well, you'd better start looking for him. I'd help you out, but unfortunately, I have a banquet mirage to attend to. You're free to come if you'd like. I think I'll pass, Anubis. Those banquets look better from a distance. When you get up close, all the yummy food on the table seems to disappear. Just like my best pal, Fox Sparks number one. From day 58 to day 62, I delved deep into the mines in order to get away from all my problems for a while. I feel like I've gotten in way over my head with all this Power World stuff. All I wanted to do was play a fun game. I don't even know what that means anymore. Maybe I'll feel better after I fall back on my bread and butter, mining and crafting. Along the way, I was attacked by a rampaging horde of terrifying, deadly, uh, turtles? Boy, the mob distribution in Power World is weird as heck. The turtles had high defenses, but my warden shriek wore them down, and I pulled out my mechanical crossbow, and honestly, is anybody that excited about hearing how I defeated some turtles? I mean, they're just turtles. Name one more animal more boring than a turtle. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry to any turtle fans in the audience. Maybe I'll spend 100 days as a turtle sometime to make up for it. Battle with the turtles was one of the most exciting things I'd ever done in my lifetimes. And when it was over, I was able to find those diamonds I was looking for. Yay, Power World! I mean, diamonds! I mined enough of everyone's favorite stone to fashion myself a bonafide diamond pickaxe as well as a diamond sword. I've been using ranged weapons so long because of Power World that I almost forgot how good it feels to swing a genuine diamond sword around. My time in the mines may have been difficult work, but it reminded me how to have fun, and that's all that really mattered. Oh, and saving my pal and winning my legal case. That matters too! From day 63 to day 66, I returned to my base, rejuvenated by my treacherous turtle tussle. But despite being in a place with an excess amount of fox sparks, I felt super duper powerless. I gazed upon my half-finished statue, the statue in which I worked so hard to build, by commanding my fox sparks to work so hard to build, and just like its unfinished glory, too felt a part of myself missing. Oh, fox sparks number one, without you here, I just feel so hollow. Who will work as hard as you did? Who will not ask questions about my leadership like you did? For a raise, or for time off? Which again, no one but me is allowed to have. Hey, I'm a fox sparks, and I I'm here to be your pal, Zozo! Not you, Fox Sparks number nine! As Fox Sparks number nine ran away sobbing for presumably no reason, because I am the nicest boss ever, I continued to stare up at my statue in Power World pensiveness. But before I could finish cathartically yelling at my Fox employees, I received a letter in the mail. Return address said it had come from a courthouse? Why would a courthouse be sending me a letter? It's not like I've broken any Power World workplace ethic laws. Can't miss bossing around my employees for jury duty! It was this then that I realized what this was all about. All my number one Fox Sparks lamenting had summoned this opportunity straight into my hardworking hands. Wait, this letter is from Trash Suum, and he's mandating me to present myself at his court. I have the chance to fight to get my number one Fox Sparks back. Little pal, I'm coming for you. If my name isn't 
Zozo. With my totally original catchphrase, I stolen from no one but my own mind, I decided to get suited up, quite literally, and prepare for my big day in Pal World Court. Am I innocent? Guilty? I'll let you decide. So be sure to subscribe, cause I'm terrified. Hey, that rhymed. I'm a poet and didn't even know it. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the address on the court mandate deep into the ebony woods until I found a spooky old courthouse. I guess this must be where the trial of the century will be held. I don't know if I'm ready to stand up to the legal might of Trash Suam. I've gotta save my pal. This is pal world after all not abandon your pal's world. I marched right up to the front door and found it guarded by yet another hard-shelled turtle mob. Only this one had cannons mounted on his shoulders. Whoa, turtles just got a whole lot more exciting. I take it all back. This dude is rad. Looking a little closer, I realized that I was looking at the water Pokemon Blastoise. Or uh, a pal of some kind that I'd never encountered before. Hey pal, I'm here for my day in court. Can I go in? Blastoise. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. Just like the Pokemon. But really though, what is your pal name? Blastoise. I suddenly realized that I was dealing with a real Pokemon, and he was not happy about being asked so many questions. Blastoise fired a water blast at me, so I doubled back and found some cover to hide behind. I pulled out my mechanical shortbow and started firing as many arrows as I could. Blastoise's water was everywhere, so it was difficult to stay dry for long, but fortunately, I had a secret weapon, my Warden Shriek. I stunned the big blue tortoise with a well-timed shriek and rushed in with my diamond sword to seal the deal. Well, that battle it didn't exactly scream Power World, but I sure enough got the job done. I proceeded inside the courthouse, knowing that the day of my destiny would soon be arriving. From day 71 to day 74, I presented myself in Trash Suum's court. Fortunately, my fancy suit was covered in muddy sticks and leaves from that Blastoise battle out front. What I lacked in style, I made up for in confident courtroom charisma. Confidence. Until I saw another Kremis at the witness stand. Old man Kremis Senior. You're testifying against a hey, you! That's the whippersnapper who took down my entire family. Got a lot of explaining to do, Mr. Muddy Suit. If I'm not under oath, I don't have to explain anything. You look mighty hungry, Grandpa. So I'm about to serve you some defendant dessert. Eat this, old man. Still brandishing my diamond sword, I ran at old man Kremis Sr., swinging with all my might. This Kremis was surprisingly sharp for his age, and he dodged my every attack. I swung around frantically at the nimble old crevice, hitting lots of courtroom items with my sword and breaking open a chest in the process. But my attention was diverted towards the items I found inside. A full set of diamond armor. Whoa, Trash Suam must be loaded from all the suing he does. Since Mr. Suam stole my best pal, I'm sure he won't mind if I steal his best suit of armor. I trashed my muddy suit for a sparkling new fit of diamond. But as I turned around to continue fighting Kremis Sr., I realized he was nowhere to be found. A fox sparks in his place, but not just any fox sparks. Fox sparks number one? You're right, Zozo. It's me, fox sparks number one. Come closer and I'll give you a big old polish hug. I walked toward my fox sparks, tears in my eyes, and arms wide open for a hug. I missed you so much, fox sparks the first. And I missed you too, Zozo. But hurry, we don't have much time left. After our hug, we should take a few days days off together and go on vacation. Just you and me on a Pal World adventure. Wait, any Foxploy knows they aren't allowed days off. Only I'm allowed days off. You aren't my Foxploy number one. With a swift slash of my diamond sword, the faux Fox Sparks number one was defeated, as he must have been Crema Senior, who had shapeshifted into my best pal just to deceive me. From day 75 to day 78, I was called up to the stand to testify in my own defense. Uh oh, the moment of truth. I'm so nervous. Mr. Zozo, you are on trial here today because this court finds you in violation of the intellectual property rights of some seriously powerful people. Not only are you here in Pal World without permission from Pocket Pair Incorporated, but it says that you've also made hardcore Minecraft videos where you've been Monkey D. Luffy, Shrek, Darth Vader, Thor from the Avengers, and most relevant of all to this case, Fire Mario. How do you plead? Okay, first of all, all of this is covered under fair use, right, YouTube?
Wink. Second of all, uh, Power World is really fun, okay? I really like Power World. Really fun. Did I mention it was fun? I rest my case. Silence fell over the entire courtroom. I knew that I had won them over for sure. Then I realized it was really just me and Trash Suum, and the leatherworking lawyer type didn't seem remotely pleased with my assessment. You finished already? Then I guess it's time to deliver your sentence. I find you guilty of being a greedy little thief and hereby sentence you to death by me. Oh, my name isn't Trash Suum. Trash Suum pulled out his exploding crossbow, and I pulled out my mechanical shortbow, and we started having a crazy, awesome, amazing ranged weapon fight in the courtroom! Now this is the kind of defense I prepared! Eat arrows! Kablamo! We used the pews and stance for cover, and continued to fire at each other in the true Power World fashion! Wow! These are the kind of high-stakes action gameplay you could only get in Power World! Yay! Power World! I love Power World! Stop that! Stop praising Power World! Ha! Now I've got you! Trash's anger made him pop out of cover, and I used that opportunity to shoot a whole bunch of arrows into him until he went down! I guess Trash Suum is adjourned! Man, my one-liners are not good today. Hmm. On my way out of the courthouse, I swung by the evidence locker and grabbed Fox Sparks number one. My pal by my side and my court case winding up as a mistrial, I returned to my base in order to resume my carefree life of having fun in Power World. From day 79 to day 84, Trash Suum recovered from his numerous arrow wounds and seethed with barely contained fury about the way the whole legal case angle had turned out. Oh man, I am the angriest I've ever been pen and I keep on getting angrier every second of every day. I thought for sure that Power World was going down in that court trial, but Zozo had to interfere and shoot me with arrows. Oh, I absolutely hate Zozo. Who is he to have so much fun for no reason? Life isn't about fun. It's about corporations owning things and monetizing all expression and art. And ideally, I want to be the guy who owns it all. But that one horrible three-letter word keeps getting in the way. Fun. Ooh, fun. How I hate I hate fun. I hate things that are fun. I hate people who have fun. And I especially hate the idea that those people are having fun without my permission. That's it. That's what I'll do. I'll destroy fun itself. Yeah, that's my whole thing now. I'm all about destroying fun. Forget to process. That's my entire villain motivation from here on out. Trash Suum tapped into his sheer anti-fun attitude and became a bigger, meaner version of himself. He had become Trash All Fun, the fun trashing guy. From day 85 to day 89, I relished in Trash Suum's supposed defeat, till I felt a seismic change of fun levels in the air. So did my Fox employees, including my best Fox Spark, Fox Spark the number one. And that's the principle, pal number one. It's who you know, not what you know. That's why I promoted you to manager of my company. Because you're my bestest pal in the whole wide pal world. And no one else. Gee, thanks, Zozo. It sure is nice being able to watch everyone work rather than doing it myself. And as thanks for saving me and promoting me to manager, I'll tell you this tidbit of managerial wisdom. To defeat the fun hater trash all fun, you'll need to obtain a potion of pure fun. Wow, normally it's the higher-ups who give down. But this is a welcome change. Thrilled with my new piece of knowledge, I am now ready to defeat the final boss and fun hater, Trash All Fun. But before I do, I head off to see my statue, which has now been completed by my gaggle of definitely well-paid fox marks. Unfortunately, it was a little underwhelming, as it wasn't a statue of me, but rather a statue of some random mar, I mean Meryl. Oh well, if my fox employees won't immortalize me for my awesome business ownership, I I guess it's time for those layoffs I mentioned several days ago. From day 90 to day 94, I returned to the lame base in the warped desert where I knew I could find the one person who could help me defeat Trash All Fun. And by person, I mean pal. And by pal, I meant Pokemon. I stepped inside the base to find Pikachu right where I left him, and looking as sour as ever to be trapped in a world so totally different from his own. Pikachu, I need your help. You finally came crawling back to old Pikachu, huh? 
Well, forget it. I told you before, I don't need any pals. And I don't want anything to do with this pal world thing. I just want to go back to my own Pokemon world. Believe me, I get it, Pikachu. I mean, I am having a lot of fun with pal world. This adventure has been one of my most stressful yet. To mention meta, I'm looking forward to a nice low stakes one next time. Maybe 100 days as a turtle. Mmm, yeah, I've really warmed up to it. Wait a minute. That's it, Zozo. Clear this challenge at the the end of 100 days, I'll no longer be a character in this story, and I'll be free to return home. Guess we've got the same goal then. You help me defeat Trash All Fun, and save Pal World, and I'll survive through the remaining days so you can be a Pokemon again. You got yourself a deal, Zozo. Here, take this. I was saving it for when I really couldn't take it anymore, but you should have it. Pikachu handed me a potion of pure concentrated fun. Whoa, what'll happen if I have this much fun at once. The effects are unpredictable. Save it for the right moment. Thanks, Pikachu. I choose you to be my... Don't say pal. Pokemon! Yay! Pokemon! From day 95 to day 97, I found myself face to face with Anubis because I had invited him to hang out in my base like a pal of mine. I don't know why I phrased it that way. It seemed more dramatic than it was. So, Anubis, we're pals, right? It's the name of the game, Zozo. Also, yes. That's good to know. So, what are you going to do to help me with the battle against Trash Suum? Or, uh, Trash Alpha? Oh, I hadn't thought of anything. I let you stay here for free, and I don't even charge you rent. And this is the thanks I get? Oh, Zozo, chill. I was having a really nice day. Just staring at mirages before you got all demanding. The stakes are really high, Anubis. All the fun in the pal world is on the line. Come on, be a pal. Anubis groaned and left the room for a moment before coming back with a full suit of netherite armor. Yeah, it's a full suit of netherite armor for you, pal. Thanks, pal. I equipped the netherite armor, feeling armored by both the defensive stats and the confidence of knowing my pals had my back. On day 98, my life of fun in Pal World was drawing nearer to its climactic end. I sure did meet a lot of pals, build a lot of stuff, and fire a lot of arrows during all of this. But it's not about the pals you make on the journey, it's about how many journeys you make with your pals. And I've got plenty of those. And you can find them all by searching for more Zozo videos. Also, remember to leave a comment about what I should do next. Ooh, say turtle. I really want to be a turtle now. On day 99, I returned to the courthouse in the deepest part of the Ebony Woods. Inside, Trash All Fun was waiting for me. A massive version of what he used to be. And what he used to be was already really bad. Trash All Fun. That's my name, and that's what I'll do. I'll trash all fun and make sure there's none left for anybody. What happened to you, Trash? You've become a far more one-dimensional character than I remember. This is your fault, Zozo. You and all your pals who are having fun here in Pal World. You made me into this, and now you're gonna regret ever having fun in your life. Not so fast. I'm about to drink a potion of pure fun, so we'll see who's laughing after that happens. Probably me, because it's gonna be really fun. I drank the entire potion of pure fun in a single gulp and was immediately overtaken by the vast amounts of fun circulating through my form. Ah, it's almost too much fun, but I can handle it. I can evolve with it. I embraced the fun and my heart meter was raised all the way up to 100 hearts. Now I'm not just having fun, I am the fun. I was breathing out flames of pure fun and scorching trash all fun with my fire breath. Oh, I hate this! The fun! It burns! It burns! Oh, my name isn't trash! He poofed into a large pile of ashes, defeated by the very thing he had set out to destroy. It's over, Trash. Looks like this time, the fun had you. On day 100, I returned to my base and threw a ginormous, palicious work party with all my pals. There was a pool table, football table, a coffee bar, inflatable pools, and a whole dozen donuts, all funded with the money I could have paid my employees a proper wage with. Man, this donut is awesome, but not as awesome as all my my pals. Unlike my desert banquets, food doesn't disappear before my eyes when I approach it. Just donuts for days in Pal World. And pals for days too. Eating an admittedly really good donut, one of the only good things in Pal World, Pikachu rolled his eyes in response to all this jupalation. I just can't wait to go home.